Hi everyone! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Sean and today I'm going to be going through 10 books that I did not finish that I may be willing to give another chance. So let's get into it. These books are not going to be in any particular order but they all come off of the thousand books to read list. A thousand books to read before you die by James Moustich. The first book is the Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. So I have seen this book around quite a bit recently, which helps pique my interest. And when I read it, I thought it was kind of just okay. But what happened was I got like, I don't know, 40 pages in and I just noticed the author kept repeating, she thought. So in the span of like five pages, I think the author says she thought like 15 times or more. It was just driving me crazy. It was just every sentence is like she thought, she thought, she thought. And I thought that's just very poorly written. As a first draft I can understand. But when you go to edit you should clean that up. And the author didn't. She just kept it in. So that made me DNF the book. I know that's a pretty poor reason I guess to DNF the book but it was just driving me crazy. But anyway if I could try to look past that, I would be willing to give the book another try because I just didn't get far enough into the book that I can't really say anything about it other than that. The next DNF I would be willing to give a second try would be Cry the Beloved Country by Alan Patton. Part of the reason I would give this another try is because after reading it, I found a signed copy. So that is pretty sweet. The reason I wound up DNFing this book is this book does not have quotation marks. In place of quotation marks, it has dashes. So at least it has dashes to mark dialogue. I mean, some books don't have any kind of markers at all. I did actually read about 50, 60 pages of this book that I recall. So I did give it an honest try. And my recollection of the book was I thought it was just okay. But since I have the signed copy, I think I would be much more lenient with it over the dialogue issue. So I am willing to give it another try. The next DNF I would be willing to give another try would be O Pioneers by Willa Cather. Now, I actually did in my review write that I read like 70, 80, maybe even 100 pages of that book. And it just wasn't working for me. I thought the book was overall just okay. But just like the previous book, what wound up happening is I got a signed copy of Obscure Destinies by Willa Cather, another book by her. And so this is like one of my more prized autographs because I mean Willa Cather died in like, I don't know exactly, I think like 1940 or something, 1940s. So she's a real older author. She's like a classic American author. So having the signed book by her I think is really sweet. It makes me want to read more of her writing. And O Pioneers is one of her more popular books. The other book I definitely want to try by her is My Antonia. So I don't know. I'm just hoping since I have a signed book by her that maybe I would be more willing to like O Pioneers instead of just thinking, well, it's just okay. Maybe I'll find more good things about it in the writing, the storytelling, the plot, whatever. I am also really liking Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurdy and I think those are both very similar books. They're both kind of like Western pioneer-ish books. So since I really like Lonesome Dove I'm hoping that will kind of also make me like O Pioneers. Like maybe I'll read it and I'll kind of think like oh this is kind of like Lonesome Dove. So I like it that way. The next book is Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. I gave up on this book after five sentences. Now you may think how could I give up on a book after just five sentences? That's like a quarter of a page. But no, it is not. And the reason is, is because of the length of those sentences. The first five sentences in Robinson Crusoe are 105 words, 60 words, 122 words, 20 words, real short sentence there, and then 288 words. A 288 word sentence. To put it in perspective, the length of those first five sentences is equivalent to these many words.
I know it's like different times and all that, but you should not have sentences this long, especially to start a book. This is just insane. Another problem with that book was that I think nouns were capitalized. So like every other word would be capitalized and it was just driving me crazy. So what I need to do for that book is I will pretty much not read that same edition, whatever edition I had. What I want is an edition with more modern spelling and grammar and hopefully more modern sentences as well. So don't give me a 288 word sentence. That is just insane. Cut it up. Another book I read, Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift, would have been written in the same way. So it would have had the nouns capitalized and all that. That was just the way they did it back then. But I don't like that. And I know some people may want to be a purist and like read it as original readers read it, but it just drives me crazy. I just can't deal with that with nouns being capitalized. I'm just like, that should not be capitalized. And anyway. I need to find a modern edition of Robinson Crusoe if I'm going to read it. Another DNF that I may be willing to give another try would be Things Fall Apart by, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Chinua Achebe. This book, I don't really remember too much about it, except I thought it was just okay. I don't even really have any particular reason why I DNF'd it. It was just an okay book. It wasn't doing anything for me. And I would like to give it another try just so I could have a better opinion of it, hopefully. So I could either know if I don't like it, what do I not like about it? And yeah. Next is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This is my first book I tried reading by Oscar Wilde. And I actually thought my impression going in would be that Oscar Wilde's writing would be like very dry, wordy, boring, whatever but it really wasn't. It was actually pretty readable. And another thing that really stood out to me was his use of description. Oscar Wilde had description. He used description like I've never seen any other writer do before. And I can't give an example of it, but just the way he would describe things, it would just make me kind of be like, Hmm, I'd never heard it described like that. The reason I actually gave up on this book, and I know a lot of people talk about this book and rave about this book, but what just set me off about the picture of Dorian Gray is Oscar Wilde has a tendency to always say Dorian Gray. He full names him. He doesn't just say Dorian, or he doesn't just say Gray. He always says Dorian Gray. And I just don't like that. I don't like when authors full name their characters. Because to me, it is like they are more in love with their character than I am. To me, it's like a teenage girl like doodling her first name and her boyfriend's last name where she's just imagining herself with that name. That's kind of how I think authors are when they full name characters. They're just dreamily always doodling the full name, Dorian Gray. Just say Dorian or just say Gray and I'll know who you're talking about. But no, they don't do that. They full name the character. It just drives me crazy. I know that's a real poor reason to DNF the book and so many people do like this book. <laughs> And I would be more willing to give other books by Dorian or Oscar Wilde a chance anyway. Because like I say, his writing was pretty good. I thought it was pretty readable. And his descriptions were real unique and I like that. So I am willing to give it another try. Hopefully I could look past the full naming of the character though. I just wish he didn't do that. I wish authors wouldn't do that. Just pick either the first name or the last name of your character and stick with it. I'll know who you're talking about. Seven on the list would be, I don't know how to pronounce it, Jane Eyre? I don't know, by Charlotte Bronte. I have read, I think, a book by each of the Bronte sisters. My takeaway of this book was, I would have liked it, but what I found was the protagonist, the main girl, was just too assertive too early on. And I just didn't really like that. I kind of wished she would have been more like the suffering victim for a while. And in the end would assert herself and, you know, have her character growth, her character development and all of that. But instead she asserts herself really early on. 
And for whatever reason, I just did not really find that relatable so much as much. I didn't find her such an empathetic character. I didn't empathize with her as much. Because it's like, okay, well, she already stood up for herself. So what am I really reading on for? I know that sounds really weird, but that's just the character arc I wish the book would have had. Would be this character who is suffering from this abuse. And in the end, it's about her trying to overcome that and whatever. If that means asserting herself, if it means finding a place where she is treated affectionately, whatever. So ultimately, I just wish this book would have been rewritten. It just wasn't told in the way I was hoping it would go. But that's a pretty poor reason to DNF the book. So... I still don't know. I don't know what the book is really about. I don't read the synopsis of the books before I begin them. So I don't know how the book goes on from there, but I would be willing to give it another try. Still, I just wish the character would not have been so assertive early on. When I read this book or tried to read this book, I was actually really tempted to rewrite it, to do a retelling of it, tell the book in the way I wished it would have gone. But I just dropped that idea. But anyway, that is still an idea in the back of my mind. Eight on the list would be Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. This is a book that I see people talking about all the time. And it just kind of drives me crazy because I DNF'd this book for a very clear reason in my mind. Of all the books I had ever read, I had never encountered this specific problem in a book. And that is that in this book, the author, almost every single line, he has dialogue to start the paragraph, and then it'd be a comma, and then it'd be some kind of action, and then it'd be another comma, and then it'd continue with the dialogue. So it would be something along the lines of like, hello, she said, walking into the room, how are you? And then it would have, the next line would be like, not bad, said the guy sitting at the table, how's your husband? Then the next line would go back to the girl and it'd say like, he's well, she said, sitting at the table, and how's your wife? And then the next line, she's well, he said, picking up an item off the desk. We're going to the park tonight. Then the next line, oh, that's great, she said, picking up an item herself. I haven't been to the park in days. And it just continued like that every single line. It would just be dialogue, narration, dialogue, dialogue, narration, dialogue, dialogue, narration, dialogue. Every single line. It was just driving me crazy. And in the end, I just couldn't follow anything that was being said because I just kept like saying in my mind, like dialogue, dialogue, narration, dialogue, dialogue, narration, dialogue. It's just driving me crazy. What you should do is you should mix it up. You should have just empty dialogue without dialogue tags and then some narration. And then maybe you have dialogue, he said, and then you have some narration. Maybe you just have dialogue without any dialogue tags, whatever. You just have to mix it up. That is not what Aldous Huxley did. He just did this stupid thing, dialogue, narration, dialogue, every single sentence, every single line. But I know that's a pretty poor reason to give up on the book, so I would be willing to give it another try and just hope to God that that format of the dialogue, narration, dialogue was more in the front part of the book. Maybe as the book goes on, he doesn't do that as much. I don't know. I do remember flipping through the rest of the book and like seeing other instances of it. So I think that's just a way he wrote and it just drives him crazy. Do not write that way. Mix up your dialogue and narration. Nine on the list would be Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. So this is a book that I had heard about forever and I knew that like a lot of women listed this as like one of their all-time favorite books. So I always kind of thought Wuthering Heights was a romance like Jane Austen-esque. So that was kind of my expectation when I started. And what I remember happening was I would get into the book, I would be reading, and I would come across a line and I would be like, wait, what? Did I read that right? Because it would seem so dark what I read. And so I would reread it and indeed it was. 
So, this book was a lot darker than I thought it would be. I was expecting it just to be like some kind of a light-hearted romance. That is not what Wuthering Heights is, I think. So that just, com I was completely unexpect, damn it. I was complete. So I was just completely unexpected for this. And I think that may have been part of why I did not finish this book. So if I go to read it again, I know that this book has some very dark elements to it. I still don't know much about the plot itself. I don't know like the book summary or anything. I just know what I read. So if I do try to reread it again, I'll have a better idea of what to expect. I know this book is pretty dark, so I think I'll be ready for that. However, in my review for the book, what I said was, even though the book was very dark, I thought it was just incredibly boring. It was just dry, wordy, boring. It was driving me crazy. And something I actually said in my review is that Jane Austen's books are more entertaining than Wuthering Heights. And that is saying something because I think Jane Austen is like the worst, most boring writer in existence. So apparently when I read this, I thought Wuthering Heights was even worse. So that makes me very pessimistic about the book. But still, like I said, at least if I do try rereading it, I will be more prepared for the darker parts of it. I will be more curious about what the book is about, why so many people like it, and hopefully I'll be more willing to look past any kind of like dry or wordy parts because there have been other books that I thought were pretty dry, wordy, boring, whatever, like Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. That book was just pretty boring overall, but in the end I was really glad I read it. And actually, I have a copy of it right here, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. It's a gorgeous book and it's a collector's edition, sort of. That's why I kept it. So I am willing to give it another try. Ten on the list is Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie. So I started this book and I read two pages and it put me to sleep. It was so boring. Two days later was The Stabbing. A week later, I tried getting into the book again, and I read two more pages, and same thing. I was just bored to death by it. It was going in one ear and out the other. So I read a grand total of four pages of Midnight's Children before just deciding this book was doing nothing for me, and I just DNF'd it. Four pages is definitely not enough to have good judgment of the book. And I would like to give Salman Rushdie's books every chance in the world. I have three signed books by him. And Midnight's Children is one of his more prominent books. So I really should give it another try at some point. I don't know when though, because I know definitely just the way he writes is not appealing to me. I can't really say why. It's just his writing just doesn't do much for me. But... I would like to give him a try to try to be patient with it, try to get into it. I don't know when though, because if I try like reading it now, I'll probably just do the same thing. I'll read maybe 10 pages and I'll just be utterly bored by it and DNF it. So at some point down the road, I do plan to give his books a try. Or if Midnight's Children is just so uniquely written among his books, maybe there's a better book to start out on by Salman Rushdie. I don't know. Because I do have three other books by him. I have On the Ground Beneath Her Feet, The Moor's Last Sigh, and Joseph Anton, which is like his memoirs. So maybe if I try another Salman Rushdie book first, maybe I could kind of get into his style a little bit more. I don't know. So basically at some point I would like to give Salman Rushdie's books all a try and give Midnight's Children a retry, but I'm kind of pessimistic. So anyway, that is it for 10 books I DNF that I would be willing to give another try. So of these, have you read any of these books? Are there any on this list that you would be like, Sean, you have to give that book another try. Go, go. Because right now it's not like I'm on the verge of rereading any of these books, but they are all books I am willing to give another try. So what do you guys think? Was I just too quick rushing to judgment on these books? Is there one I should definitely give another try soon? So anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.